Subduction zones aren't as simple as you think. Most of you probably know that it's where one plate dies under another. That's the place where most volcanoes are and where large subduction quakes like the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake happen, usually resulting in tsunamis. But this video is here to tell you that there is more than just that. When you compress rock, several things can happen. Either they deform smoothly thanks to high heat and pressure, or they crack and snap resulting in faults and earthquakes. When one plate is subducting another, it pushes the overriding plate back. Two things can happen here. First, the whole thing bounces back resulting in quite a big earthquake and usually a tsunami. The other thing that can happen is that smaller cracks form inside both the under and overriding plate. It's obvious why cracks form in the overriding plate, as it is getting compressed for centuries or even a millennia. All that stress has to go somewhere. But how about the underriding plate? When you have a rather heavy continental plate pushing the plate down, it bends down and the bending causes tensional stress on the top and compressional stress on the bottom of the plate. This explains normal faulting and reverse faulting on depths of over 30 kilometers, like the 2018 Mexico earthquake, the one in Puebla, or the recent 2021 Peru earthquake. As the plate dives deeper, it often bends and deforms, reactivating faults within the diving plate, resulting in deep earthquakes like the Ohot Sea earthquake. But it gets more complicated than that. Plates don't collide directly head-on. There's usually a bit of sideways motion involved. This drags part of the overriding plate with the underriding plate, resulting in strike-slip faults forming on the overriding plate. And usually, when there are strike-slip faults, there are sometimes also some reverse and normal faulting in there as well. Probably the most famous example is the Japan Median Tectonic Line, a system of many faults that stretches from the Kanto area all the way to Kyushu and is responsible for the Kobe and Kumamoto earthquakes, notable for their violent ground motions. What we should be aware here is that plate tectonics isn't a single clean-cut fault. Rather, it's a mess of many faults, and because of this, earthquakes can happen pretty much everywhere. It's just that they are more common in some places than others. 